What's going on, everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech, and today we're going to be talking about the HP Elite Desk 800G4. Now, the reason we're talking about this PC is I've had the growing issue that my home lab server was using way too much power, and it was too big, and I wanted to size down to something smaller, and it uses way less power. So I did some research, and I was looking around, and there's a lot of good options out there, but many PCs for the price range that I wanted to spend. So, of course, there's like the Minis Form MS-101, I believe the model is. It has amazing hardware specs, has everything you can want, but it's an $800 PC. And I thought about grabbing that PC for a while to run my home lab off of, but I just couldn't cough up the $800 and then spend the additional money on drives and everything else needed. So I was doing some research around. I was looking at other uh, mini PC brands like B-Link and Geekcom and stuff like that, but I just couldn't find something for the price point and what it offered. So from there, I was looking around on Reddit, and I was actually posting around in the Mini Lab form, uh, subreddit, I believe it was, or it might have been the Home Lab subreddit, I forget. But I kind of wrote out what I was looking for, and somebody actually suggested the HP Elite Desk G4 Mini. So I looked into the specs, and they kind of like I was looking for a machine that was able to run, you know, three hard drives, two hundred VMEs possibly, was low on power, and was able to have like minimum of six cores and accept at least 32 gigs of RAM. Somebody suggested this PC, I went back and forth doing the research on it for a few days, and it looks like this PC was actually a great option. So I'm gonna pull up an eBay listing for something I was able to find. So I spent some time looking through eBay, and I was actually able to find this Elite Desk 800G4 that came with an i7-8700T. So if I take a look, this processor actually comes with six cores and 12 threads, and has a TPD of 35 watts. My original server used over 120 watts. So to have a, TP, a TDP of 35 is an absolute game changer on my system. Of course, this is a micro PC. As you can see, it's an Elite Desk, and it's exactly what I've used in the past for other videos. It's similar to the Bar My Tech server and my physical Docker environment that I run. Um, we use these systems at work all the time, so I know they're really good PCs. And what I really like is it comes with all the peripherals, it has, you know, all the I.O. you can need. It has, I forget if it's a 1 gig or 2.5 gig NIC. I want to say it's a 1 gig, which is fine. But the most important thing was that I found a full package that also came with a power supply. Because a lot of times you find these mini PCs, they don't come with power supplies. And it was only 220 bucks. It actually might have been a little bit cheaper when I bought it, I forget. It looks like the, the seller updated the, price, the listing, but that's whatever. Um, but I'm going to crack mine open. I'm going to show you what I did to mine. Originally, I planned to run this machine with a two disk, two terabyte ZFS pool. I was going to use another SSD as the OS drive, and I was going to upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM. When I received the PC, I found out that it doesn't have the SATA port connector. So if you look over here, there's usually the two and a half inch drive would sit over here. And uh, right over here would be the SATA connection. So that was gone and I couldn't find a solid one to order. So it was going to take too long. It was going to be too much of a chance. So I decided to end up scrapping the ZFS pool. And uh, if you look over here, it's reversed with the camera. So it's a little bit tricky to do this. This was actually the NVMe that was provided from the eBay seller. So I decided to just install Proxmox on this. And then I picked up two of these two terabyte silicon power NVMe drives. And it has the onboard chip for it, um, the interface. So I was able to just connect that right in. Or it might be on this end. Yeah, it's on this end. Um, but I have two terabyte uh, NVMe drive in here, so I was able to use that as my main storage. Underneath the heatsink and everything is the RAM. I think I could actually pop that off easy enough, which I can. Um, take a look. I just put two 16 gig sticks in there. Um, I'll put links below to what I got. But this is what I ended up building out, and I was a little worried about the RAM usage for my machines. Because I was looking to be able to run at least four or five virtual machines or four virtual machines in a container. Um, I My old machine, I had 72 gigs of RAM and 16 cores. So to come down to a machine with 12 cores and 32 gigs of RAM, I was a little concerned what I could be able to run. But so far, this machine has been really great. I've been able to run all my virtual machines that I need and my container that I run every day. So that's more of the hardware. There's a few more things I want to go over with the hardware, and then we'll get more into the performance. One more thing about this is it is a mini form factor. This will be getting racked to my 10 inch server rack because it fits perfectly in there and it has printable parts that you could slide it right on and rack mount this. 
If you're interested in checking this out, I'll put a link. Uh, I'll put a card up in the corner for the 10-inch project, for the 10-inch rack project. Um, I go over how I racked everything, how I got all my stuff in there. But this will be a great addition into that rack, and I might drop a picture in it right over here too so you could see. But this is perfect because now everything fits in this one rack instead of having my huge tower server, my rack, and then everything else. But that's enough about this. Let's start getting into some of the other stuff about this PC. Okay, so I just plugged everything back in for that mini PC, and I also put it on the kilowatt so we can see the power usage. I just turned on all the virtual machines. Pretty much everything that's on that server is running again, and I have it on the kilowatt. So I'm going to give it some time to mellow out, and then we're going to see what it pulls. But in the meantime, I want to go over an article I found out about this PC and share that with you too, because it has a lot of good info in it. And they also have a video. It's from Serve the Home, but I'm going to show you the article real quick. Of course, I'll put links below to this, and this article was great, and so was the video, because it really helped me confirm what I thought about this PC. So these guys really took the time to figure out all the background info on the PC and all the interfaces and everything else. But if you're looking for some more solid info about this, this article has everything. It breaks down every interface, all the jacks, like everything it goes through. It gives you your USB info. So this one side does have 10 gigabit per second, and the other side's 5 gig per second. Um, it goes over the RAM expansion, the storage expansion, it, it really goes through everything, it compares it to the other machines. This article and the video they have on it, which is at the top of the page, um, let's stop it too quick. This video over here is really useful if you're looking for some more confirmation on this project. Um, they went really deep into all the technical specs, it's a little past what I'll actually do, or I do. Um, but if you're looking for something really good on all the really technical specs, make sure to check out these links because they'll have it all there. Okay, so now I have, we're in the Proxmox environment. So let me just show you really quickly what I did. I'm not really gonna go through the whole Proxmox setup because that's something I've done a few times already, but I am running 8.1.10. I do have, if we come over to my disks, you can see I have my local LVM. So my local LVM is that two terabyte silicon power drive. It is an NVMe and I'll grab one really quick just to show you it. So like I said, I originally planned to put more drives in this one machine, so I originally got two of these. So this is the Silicon Power NVMe drive. I have to say that I always saw a Craft Computer mention it about Silicon Power, and their drives are really good for the price. So I started checking them out, and I think I bought three or four of them now, or five of them, and every drive has been solid. I've used them on the Zima Blade. I'm um, sorry, I use them on the Zima Board project. I've used them on some of my machines, and now I've used it on my new mini server. I also got one of their two and a half inch SSDs because I, sorry, it's glaring really hard. I was going to use that in this machine, but unfortunately I didn't have a SATA connection, so I couldn't use it on this machine, but this is going to get used in a future project. Going back into the machine, the setup was really simple. I just kind of ran through the whole Proxmox setup, and then I linked my backup server to it. So you can see over here I have my backup server, and it has all my backups now. We went over this, I think, two or three videos ago about migrating the VMs over, and that was actually on this machine. I mentioned it briefly, but I didn't really go into detail about what I was doing, but this was the machine that was cutting everything over. So you do see I have my Pi Hole, my Windows 11, my Docker, and my Kali box that I use for school. These are my main machines. I do have a crafty box I use to host Minecraft servers, but that's not something I host solidly. So I didn't cut that over yet. When I do need it, I'll bring it over. So, going really into the important stuff about this PC, one thing that I was really worried about was I.O. delay. So, we look on the CPU usage over here, uh, I can filter it out, and I think I could change this so it scales differently, but you can see right now the I.O. delay is really low. That's because I just powered on the machine, just powered cycles, but if I look at like the monthly average, I'll turn off that. You can see it's really only when it spikes up, so it's only when I'm doing certain tasks like powering up a VM or something like that. But it's still very low, and this was something I was really worried about because I was actually working on an R420 project, a Dell server, I think. It's an R420 or a 430 or something, and we were having crazy I.O. issues on with those drives. We don't know, it could be something else bottlenecking it, but I was really worried about that with trying to run so much stuff on one machine, especially a mini PC. I know I'm not running a ton of stuff, but these machines are pretty uh, resource intensive. My Kali box gets eight gigs of RAM, and when I'm running tests, it's very resource heavy. And the Windows 11 machine has a four core, um, I think it's a four core 12 gig RAM. Yeah, so it's four core 12 gigs of RAM. So right there, when I start doing tasks on there, I can really start powering away. 
but you can see the IO delay is really not that crazy. And this is the monthly average. Now the server's only been running for a little over a week, but I mean, these specs show it's just, it's really solid. My memory usage is where I expect it to be. Uh, my actual usage doesn't even come close to my 32 gigs of RAM. Now, of course, that's without any memory leaks or any hung up machines. The one benefit that I really do have is that my servers are scheduled to back up weekly and a few other times, I think I do it two or three times a week. So when that happens, they every virtual machine does get powered off, backed up and turned back on. So that gives me a little bit of help in having like memory leaks or anything else. So it doesn't eat up all of my memory or CPU on the server. I think that's really about it to talk about in Proxmox. I mean, it's a really simple server. I have a two terabyte pool. I originally actually did try to do a one disk ZFS and I know ZFS is very memory heavy. It does say that you should have at least eight gigs of RAM just to dedicate to ZFS. And I really didn't think it was going to use that much memory to run ZFS, but I can tell you in the one disk ZFS pool that ZFS alone was using about 10 gigs of RAM. I mean, I had one machine run and I was out of RAM already. So we clipped the ZFS and I ended up running the LVM group. So that's why you see this LVM main over here, which is that two terabyte disc. This was something that really helped me out because it gave me more memory to allocate to other machines because the LVM group really doesn't use much memory, if any at all. But that's really the core of the Proxmox server. I mean, that's really everything I could say. I have it running for everything I need and I have to say it's been really great. I mean, I've been using it. I used the Kali machine the other day. I've been using my Windows 11 machine for a few days now. Everything else has been running. It was so easy to cut everything over and I'm, I'm really happy with this and I can't wait to get it in my rack. Now, one more thing I do want to talk about is the power consumption. So like I said in the past, I was running a pretty big power server. It was using old Xeon chips. I had 72 gigs of DDR3 RAM, two heat sinks. I mean, it, it was a dual socket board, so everything was doubled. Had a graphic, I had a 1060 or a 1050 in there, I think. And I had a whole bunch of hard drives. Now, of course, this machine is scaled down. It doesn't have a graphics card in it. It doesn't have 72 gigs of RAM. It doesn't have four or five hard drives. And it's not a dual socket board. And it's much more modern. The difference is that the computing power on this mini PC is much better than that of my tower server that I ran with all old hardware. Everything's newer, so it's going to offer better performance for much less power usage and everything else. Secondly, um, it's much smaller. It's easier for me to tuck away on the side and it's not going to be eating up my power bill, which was something that I was really starting to worry about because my tower server was consuming a ton of power. I mean, I'll say alone, once I turned it off on my UPS, my wattage dropped almost 120 watts right away. So that's without it even under load and that's with most of my VMs off on the tower server. So you can only imagine how much power that was really drawn. Now, we've been talking about power, so I'm going to go over and I'm going to check the kilowatt and see what the new mini PC is using. So I've been taking a peek at the kilowatt while we've been making this video, and it's been ranging from anywhere from 13 to right now we're sitting at about 50. So that's 50 watts that's being used. Now, I don't know if you hear it, but the mini PC is currently spinning up, so something must be going on. I hear the fan revving up. Originally, about three minutes ago, the fan wasn't on and the mini PC was using 13 watts. So of course it's going to be going depending on the load. It could be that my Windows 11 machine is doing something. It could be that the Kali box is doing something. I'm not too sure, but that could be why the power increase is going up so high. But no matter what, that this mini PC is already using a half, if not a quarter of the power that my tower server was using. And it's in a mini form factor box instead of an EATX case. So all in all, I will say that the HP G4 800 is a great home lab machine. If you're looking for a mini PC just to get in, add a few parts to, and not break the budget, this machine is a great PC to use for your mini lab. It works easily with Proxmox, and you can run a ton of different machines as you see. Of course, the configuration may vary. I am using the i7 with uh, six cores and 12 threads. If you're using one of the i5s and only have four cores, eight threads, or one of the other um, combinations that are available, you might have different results. I would still say that you're going to have pretty good results, depending no matter what on the CPU or whatever it is. You might just not be able to run as many machines as you might want. If you can find one of the i7s, then you might really be set. I can say that if I'm able to pick up another one of these machines in this configuration, I probably will and set it up as either another machine for a cluster 
or um, just to cut over some of my other VMs that I'd like to run. But that is all about the HP G4 800. Uh, like I said, I highly recommend if you're looking for a mini lab machine to pick one of these up. I want to thank everybody for watching. I'll have links below to everything. I'll have it to the serve the home guide. The video will be in the uh, article. All the links for the hardware I use on the mini PC, all the hardware that I normally use, and I'll even throw an eBay link in in the description below. As always, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you could drop a like, subscribe, and comment, it helps the channel grow, and I'll see you in the next video.